It was raining. I stared into blank space with empty eyes as my blood flowed down from my face and dripped on the floor with the raindrops. The world is a muddied one. However, there are two things that are clear to me. They, referring to my family, are good. Those bullies are evil. Now imagine if this kind of life was yours. After school, in the playground, he lifted me up, ha, huh, ra, and slammed me on the ground then one of his buddies, while riding a bicycle kicked my ribs and said 400cc attack. The other one was shooting me with a toy gun with grasshoppers, and another one kicked me on my belly like I was a soccer ball. My name is Yuruma Shun, and I'm 12 years old. One of them said it was okay for today's experiment, which was bullying, but their leader said no, that it was not over yet. He grabbed my arms and crossed them over my neck as if he was trying to choke me. I said it hurt as the other four watched as he strangled me. Kuga Dechai, 12 years old, the one who threw me, said, as expected. Ashiro Yuuga, 12 years old, the one who kicked me while riding a bicycle, said as he looked at me psychopathically. Ha, huh? his face is bright red, then he mimicked the sound of a car, vroom vroom. Nadoka Hiro, 12 years old, the one who kicked me in the belly, said while looking excitedly, Keia. As expected, Kayu chan Senkuji, 12 years old, the one who shot me with a toy gun with grasshoppers, said, Madoka-kun, you're getting too excited. Shigoku Kayou, a 12-year-old who was now strangling me. Kuga Dechai said to Shigoku Kayou with a smirk, you must have seen that move in the dojo, didn't you? Then Kayou said, yeah, it's a technique to end one's life. Kuga praised him and said to the others that Kyo-chan was even more amazing than the adults in the dojo. Kyo-chan said, if you tighten it here, he'll die, he tightened my neck, and it became even harder to breathe. I was completely afraid, and I really felt like I was going to die. Soon after I became a fifth grader, I started being bullied by these five. I didn't understand why they did it, and it just suddenly happened that they bullied me daily. Keiya, this guy just soiled his own pants, Madoka said. Then Kaiyu chan jumped off me and said, gross, I was just about to kill him for real. I thought to myself, if he really intended to kill me, then he said, well, later then, test subject A, then they all left with him. Then I started heading home. Lab Rata is the nickname those guys call me. They're likening bullying as an experiment. Truly, I can't understand them. I looked towards the stream under the bridge then I went there to clean myself up. I came out panting after cleaning myself in the river, I really can't do it, I said while clenching my shorts. Meow, there was a white kitten in a box on the riverbank. I came running home. Mom, Dad, I'm home. They looked shocked and asked while I was soaked, and without stopping, I told them that I was playing by the river. Then I ran to meet my brother, Kakaru, as I called out his name while opening his room door. Yuruma Kakaru, six years old. Big bro, you're soaked. I shook the water off me while telling him I was playing by the river, and he laughed as he said the water was cold. I smiled and then took him to where I found the kitten. Kakaru was super excited as he hugged the kitten. Then he asked why they couldn't bring it home, but I told him that we should just leave it here and it would be their little secret. Kakaru smiled and said it was exciting somehow. He smiled as he played with the kitten asking what he would name it, then he turned to me and asked what was that mark on my neck that I got from when Yu Chan tried to strangle me. I panicked for an instant, then I smiled and turned away completely, I told him. I was wrestling at school, but I was caught in a strangle attack, but I won at the end, you know. What a blatant lie I told my brother as he smiled and said is that so. To me, that was all that mattered and the only thing that calmed my heart. I can't let him know, no matter how hard it is, I will keep up this lie. I can't let him know to save the smile of my younger brother. But little did I know that Koga Dechai and Sen Kuji were watching my brother and me from afar. I left a note for my dad saying I had to go out to buy something and left a crab stick. Then I headed to where the kitten was to feed it what I bought as I wondered if it would like it. When I got there, I was perplexed, it was not there. Churn, churn. A sudden wave of fear overwhelmed me. It was the sound of Ashiro Yuuga's bicycle as they all approached me. Then Kaiou said to me, Hey, test subject A, come with us. They led me to a thick forest, and he said they left the kitten at this mountain. I turned around in fear and shock, then he whispered in my ear, there are boars and foxes here, you know, if you don't find it quickly, I wonder if it'll get eaten. Without thinking straight, I rushed into the forest in search of the cat. As I rushed through the forest carelessly, all I could ask myself was why they did that. Ho, oh, he really went in, Koga said. Hey Kaiou chan Yu-chan, why did you start bullying Yuruma? Madoka Hiro asked. What is it, Hiro? Do you not like it? Kaiou asked. No, no, I'm not saying that I don't like it, we're following you Chan because it's fun for us as well, but I haven't heard of any reason why you're picking on him. That's all, Hiro said. 
for a person. What do you think the most amazing thing they can do is? Kaio asked. All four of them answered differently. Ashiro said, lead a bike gang. Koga said gold medal. Sen said, go to space and Madoka said, be filthy rich. But Kaio said to them, no. With a despairing look, he said, the answer is, to kill a person. To murder, Madoka asked. But he said, no, it's not simply murder. To kill for someone's sake, to kill for yourself, kill for love, there's always a reason. However, I will be the first person who grew up in a loving and welcoming family. Blessed with friends, no reason, no desire, a killer likes that. He continued as they all looked at him with awe, killing someone directly or indirectly. Now that's decided. So first for a weak person like him, referring to Yuruma Shun, who was running through the forest aimlessly, trying to kill him indirectly would it be risky or not? That's what this kind of experiment is, Kaiwu explained. Simultaneously while Yuruma found the kitten box and was heading slowly closer to it, Kaiwu was saying, for test subject A, how far must he be driven, until he kills himself and Yuruma was crying severely as he only found an arm left of the whole kitten's body. Hey, you're really amazing, Kaiwu chan said to Madoka. Yuruma was wandering through the forest while sobbing, he said to himself, those guys are too mean. Even though we haven't given it a name yet as he recalled what happened to the cat. How could they do such a thing? He said to himself, mom, dad, and Kakaru, I want to see them right now. A strong wind blew, and I was frightened. Where is this place? I panicked as I looked around. Then I heard rustling from behind me in the bushes and in fear, I fell on my back. And to my surprise, an old man came out holding a rifle. He said, shun. And I said, Gramps. I looked at the weapon, and he said it was just a hunting rifle, and that he was looking for wild boars to hunt. He crouched and asked if I was lost. So I said yes then, with his normal frightening empty eyes. He said it wasn't okay for me to be here, and that he would take me home. In the morning, as the sun was rising, we reached home and found my mom standing outside worried. She sighted us and called out my name. Gramps tapped me on the back and told me to be a good boy before taking his leave. Gramps is from his father's side of the family, and he's living by himself, so our family lives nearby to watch over his health. Or so it seems. She rushed over to me and said, why were you with Gramps just now? Didn't I tell you not to go near him? I looked down and said I was sorry. Kakaru and I aren't allowed to see Gramps, even when we asked Dad why. He wouldn't tell us anything. All he'd just say is that because we would be scared. I shut myself in my room, and all I could do was think about what had happened, as it made me want to cry. Then Kakaru opened the door and called me Big Bro, the way he usually calls me, and asked me what was wrong. However, I turned my face aside and told him nothing was wrong. I couldn't look at Kakaru's face while tearing up like this, but suddenly he rushed to me and hugged me. I couldn't hold it back anymore. I started crying out with him as he hugged me tightly. That day, I finally told my family about being bullied and was comforted by them. I didn't speak of their names since I didn't want to receive a half-hearted apology. Then, my parents moved quickly, and I was transferred to another school. And now it's been one month since I stopped going to that school. A few days later, Mom and Kakaru were going to pick up Dad, and she told me to be careful while I went to get groceries. I said okay, Kakaru said, later, big bro. I bid them farewell as Mom's car zoomed off then I went to get the groceries and began heading home. Hey, haven't seen you at school lately. A sudden wave of fear filled within me as it was a familiar voice that I wished I would never hear again talk, less meeting in person. It was Koga, and he was with Sen and Ashiro. They said they knew my mom usually goes to pick up my dad by this hour. Then Koga gave me a cell phone and said it was from Kaiwu chan I took it and listened. Running away in the middle of an experiment is unforgivable, he said through the phone. Then from where he was, he continued, Hey, the mountain pass that test subject A's parents usually pass through. I think it wouldn't be weird if there was an accident there, would it? I was horrified completely and before I could say anything he cut the phone. We'll probably have to end the experiment after this, Huck Kaiwu said as he stood on a mountainside cliff with Madoka. However, the order of what I wanted to do was reversed. Kaya, look, his parents' car is coming. What are you gonna do? Madoka said. This, Kaiwu said as he pushed Madoka off the cliff, he tumbled and rolled, then finally crashed on the road that the car was approaching. From the sudden appearance of a child on the road, Yuruma's mum hurriedly turned the steering wheel, and the car went off the rails, going down a hill before finally crashing and hitting a tree. Kaiwu jogged past Hiro and told him to look that it worked as Hiro smiled creepily while he was bleeding from the head. Kakaru had his seat belt on, so he wasn't really injured and woke up first. He you buckled the seat belt and called his ma and pa, but they didn't respond. Then suddenly, Kaiwu chan opened the door with a rock in his left hand. He hit Kakaru on the head with the rock, 
and he started bleeding. Then he continuously did it over and over and over again. Then Madoka lit a matchstick and set the whole car ablaze with all three of them in it. Looks like it's begun, the accident, Kaiwu said as he licked Kakaru's blood which splattered on his face and his white shirt. In the hospital, the doctor said they managed to save my brother, but he's suffered serious burns and injuries, and he might not even be able to wake up for the rest of his life. I crumbled as I recalled memories of us all together, tell me, what would you do if this were you? Dad, Mom, Kakaru, and I, too. Should I die too? A couple came from behind me. The man said that he was my father's brother then he asked me if I had a place to stay from then on. He said if I don't, how about I come to stay with them? And his wife said it was a bit far off, but it would be good. Suddenly, Gramps flashed in my head, and I said I already had a place to go. I remembered the weapon he was holding as I said I had a place to go. I packed my stuff and went to Gramps' house, then I knocked, and he opened the door. Thanks for letting me stay, Gramps, I said. He patted my head and said it was okay since he gets lonely here anyway, and it was good to have me. Then I looked towards the keys that were hung. In the night, there was a heavy storm as it rained heavily. I'll send you home, but before that, let me put this away in the warehouse, Gramps said as he went to drop the hunting rifle. Later then, with the keys, I stood in front of the warehouse, determined, then I unlocked the door and switched on the torchlight as I searched for the gun. Ah, over there, I looked as there was a locker, I opened it and found the rifle with this. The lightning boomed and showed a large picture frame with nine soldiers men in the picture. Kideyama Kor, what is this? I looked around and even saw a katana. Shun, what are you doing here? Gramps said as he came in, which startled me, then he saw me with the gun and asked what I intended to do with it as he approached me and said to give it here. I turned it away and clanged it close to me while saying, no, I won't. With a glaring maniacal look, I said, with this, Dad, Mom, Kakaru, I'll kill those bastards. I'll kill them all. Gramps was shocked and asked, were they killed? Is that the truth? Then the police. I shouted I wouldn't tell them, and looked at him dead straight in the eye as a tear dropped. I won't let anyone take this revenge away from me. Gramps looked down and said, if I were to kill them, I'd use a knife or anything else. Are you so hopeless that you'd have to use that? I'm not. Is that so? Then he grabbed the gun from me and continued, however, with that thing, you'd be caught by the police before being able to kill anyone. Besides, if it's the current you, the guilt of killing them would haunt you for the rest of your life, shun even if it's to avenge your family. Where is the thrill in that? He said, which spooked me to my bones. Gramps walked past me to his katana as he told me about his past. Pura Sanchifu's 100th Special Squadron also known as the Kideyama Corp, was a Japanese secret service unit established in the Second World War. In my time there, ways of killing people were thoroughly drilled into me. He looked at me with those cold empty dark eyes of his and said, then I shall train you to certainly give them the suffering they deserve and exact your revenge. Gramps' words were no lies, and I'm convinced that's the case because Kaiwu chan and Gramps' eyes were exactly the same. Cold, completely dark, and empty eyes. Four years later, I was looking at my family's photo while Gramps and I were in my brother's hospital room. In this mudded world, the person who drifted around, not knowing what he was, no longer exists. Good, my family and evil, those bullies, and then I Gramps, I'm going out. I have become something determined. Vengeance rises on the shores of good and evil. Maizuki High, it's a naturally colorful school commute. Unchanging despite the passage of time. The elegant school building. Participation in club activities is non-mandatory because the school tradition places importance on. Takes pride in respecting the student's autonomy. I love this school. Please let me be like the heroine in the morning drama just like that. Her thoughts were cut by her friend, Morning Chizuru. She said as she winged her bag and smacked her on the back of her head with it. While touching her head, she greeted back, a bit pissed, Morning, Moan, thanks for ruining my good mood. Ha, huh, good mood. What, did you get a boyfriend or something? What, of course, not, Chizuru said as she blushed and stood back up from her seat. I know, right. It's still too early for Chizuru, right. Their two other friends came in and joined them as they were talking in the classroom. The one with short hair said while coming with the other with long black hair, what's going on? You're energetic this morning. And then Moan said, Chizuru wants a boyfriend. The short-haired one said while trying to be spooky, if you're not careful, you might get attacked by some suspicious guy. And her other friend joined her while saying it spookily too. Apparently, there are some lately around 2 meters tall. Too big. Chizuru said. Wait, I never said that. Then, you don't need a boyfriend. That's not it. Chizuru said while blushing and turning aside. Kaya. Her other two friends squealed and said they would talk about this again during the break as they left the class. During class, Chizuru was thinking about what her friend said, boyfriend. 
She thought to herself, During middle school, I was always absorbed in club activities, so I've never once thought about it. Something like that, though, for someone like me who has never confessed to anyone before, it's dubious as to whether I'd be able to have a proper romance. Then the teacher asked, For this question, Yuruma. He was dozing in the class, so when the teacher called out his name, he suddenly woke up while drooling and said A. It's not A, the teacher said. How many times does that make? Solve this question. Ah, uh, you wouldn't know it, huh? Then Yuruma surprisingly walked to the board and stared at it. The teacher was surprised and asked if he could solve it. He picked up the chalk and paused as if he was thinking. Then he said, I don't understand. Why did you even come up to the board then go back to your seat? And as he went back, nearly the entire class started laughing. And when he returned to his seat feeling a bit embarrassed, Chizuru looked at him and giggled. During break, when Chizuru met with her friends. So, is there anyone Chizuru is interested in? We're continuing from just now. I'm telling you there isn't, Chizuru said, trying to defend herself if you're forced to choose. If you were forced to choose, her friend said while pressuring her. If I'm forced, eh? She turned aside and looked at Yuruma and said maybe him. They were all surprised. She tried defending herself, saying it wasn't about love or anything and that she just found him interesting while they all squealed. But she looked at them seriously, and they stopped as they saw the seriousness in her eyes. Hum, is Yuruma Kun really interesting? He's handsome but slender and seems weak. Aw, oh, I hit you, Yuruma, Kuga said as he hit Yuruma to the ground. No, it's okay, Yuruma said as he tried to pick up his book. But Koga kicked it away, then Chizuru couldn't watch anymore and decided to intervene. But Kuga glared at her, and she immediately froze. Let's go, Senkuji, Kuga said, then Senkuji told him, let's stop this. Daichai Kun won and he told him to shut up. Kuga Daichai and Senkuji Kasumi. Kuga's the worst, right? Mon said to her friends. So he was that kind of person. He's a special scholarship student for karate. I wonder why Senkuji gets along with him. Same middle school, maybe. While Chizuru looked worried as she watched Yuruma leave the classroom. Yuruma went to the staff room to carry three boxes. Then Chizuru called my name and introduced herself, Azuma. Azuma Chizuru from the same class. She said as she carried one of the boxes from him. Thanks, but it's better if you don't get involved with me because Kuga might target you as well. And she paused. Then she continued going while saying, let's just say he won't find out. They carried the boxes to the music preparation room. Phew, the teacher made you carry something this heavy, she said. Azuma-san, thanks. She blushed as she told me to stop thanking her because that time, she couldn't do anything. So it was a form of atonement for her sake. Because Kuga-kun is big and scary, she said playfully. I laughed gently and said that's true. She stammered and asked if Kuga-kun was from the same middle school as me. But I said no, but we attended the same elementary school. I see. But you sure are kind, Azuma-san. But I'll be fine, I don't think much of Kuga's actions. She thought to herself about what I said that Kuga did that much to me, and I didn't think much about it, then she said if it's like that, then she'll go to the teachers, but I cut her, short by glaring at her menacingly as if she was a nuisance which frightened her, then I, told her it was really fine, but then she said if anything happens, then she can, but I cut, her again and told her not to as it was more of a nuisance than Kuga while glaring at her, then I left the room, later, while Chizuru was eating with Moan and her other friends, I don't get him, why doesn't he want to tell the teachers about something like that, Chizuru said as she tore her food open, Aw oh jeez, I got so mad that tears were coming out, and her friend tried to calm her down. Moan then said Chizuru's always had too much unnecessary kindness and righteousness since way back. It'll be making things way worse, so you'd better stop. But Kuga-kun is just strange, Chizuru retorted. The friend said, Kuga-kun was also strange, but Yuruma was also strange for saying something like that. Chizuru said while puffing her face that she was sure he was afraid Kuga might find out if he told the teacher. And they all agreed, she said Moan might have hit the bullseye with her description of Yuruma as weak and slender. Then hurriedly, she bid them farewell and headed home. Chizuru missed the bus, and it would take 30 minutes for the next one, so she decided to walk to the station. On her way, she saw Yuruma, who was taking the same route. What he said flashed back, and she thought it would be weird if she overtook him. She looked away and saw I was not there, so she wondered where I had gone. Suddenly an ugly huge fat pervert with a hoodie jumped on her and covered her mouth. She panicked as she thought of running. She managed to remove his hand with her two hands and was about to scream. But he pulled out a knife and told her not to scream, or he'll kill her. Then he tore open her shirt. She tried to cover it with her hands, but he threatened her to remove her hands while creepingly glaringly and smiling at her. Out of fear, she relaxed as she hoped it would be over quickly. He began you buckling his belt as he told her he had technique. She was so scared as she wanted her first time to be with someone she liked and not this pervert. 
Then I came from behind and kicked him in the face. Shizuru looked up at me as she was tearing up. He was angry and yelled at me for ruining his fun. Then he yelled that he would kill me and rushed at me with the knife to stab me. But immediately I flipped him over, then used an arm lock to disarm him and knocked him out with a heel stomp. She cried as she was so scared. I asked her if she was okay and she should do me a favor. Whatever she saw here, I said that I would handle it and I would also take him to the police, so she should keep quiet and tell no one about what happened. Then as she saw my gaze, she could only obey. I covered her with my jacket and smiled. Then I told her to wear it since her clothes were torn and she should head back. Then I bid her farewell. On the train, she could only ponder. Those moves of his could only be seen in movies, and Moan was completely wrong. He wasn't just weak and slender but thank goodness he came. Oh, I forgot to thank him. I stabbed him in the belly with his knife and killed him. Then I raised my hand to the sky and said, Grandpa, I can do it. I can kill people. My eyes were finally like theirs. The blood on his palm is proof of his study. With this, he can also kill them. When I returned, Grandpa was in the kitchen preparing dinner when he inquired about the promise I made to him. For some reason, Grandpa believes that we should let those who have changed go. Because, according to him, humans are able to acknowledge and reflect on their sins over time. And we should be able to forgive them because that is what makes us human. However, if they still have not changed, we can exact revenge by ripping off their bowels and skin and thoroughly killing them because they are no longer humans who deserve to live. And so, I agreed to the promise because, personally, I don't believe they should be forgiven. We then go over the information gathered over the last four years on the bullies. S-H-I-N-K-O-G-U-K-Y-O-U First year at Taizai High, Expertise, Evil Intent King of the Control Tower and Central Figure in My Parents' Death Passed the test to the top prep school with full marks and currently looking to enter the medical facility. K-U-G-A-D-I-C-H-I First year at Maizuki High, Expertise, Violence Victor of the National Middle School Judo Championship at 90 kg. I was off in his practice kit for trying out his new techniques. He has known Shikagu the longest. U-S-H-I-R-O-Y-U-U-G-A First year at Taizai High, Expertise, Handsome Handsome playboy and was labeled a womanizer after becoming a 6th grader. Current private life is a mystery. S-E-N-K-O-U-J-I Katsumi First year at Maizuki High, Expertise, Toys Loves tormenting the weak more than his 3 meals a day. Favorite toy is the air gun. I often became his target and cried easily from it. M-A-D-O-K-A Hyro First year at Taizai High, Expertise, Running Errands An extreme religious fanatic and the group's lackey. Will lick shoes even if to earn extra points. I ran into Azuma at school the next day, and she was getting flustered and nervous from something she was about to say to me before being interrupted by her best friend, whom I heard her call moan. Just as I was about to make my escape, she moved us to a more private area before I realized she was thanking me for the previous day. She also gave me what she described as a jibebird chan from the Chibda animal, which she said was rare and could be used as a protection charm. I then thank her, but just as I'm about to leave, she calls me back and says, never mind. I then consider that perhaps she isn't such an oddball after all, and I examine the toy bird. At the very least, I can use this to keep myself from falling asleep in class. I'm walking along, smiling to myself, when I spot Senkuji, and I'm immediately reminded of how we first met and became friends, not knowing he'd become my worst nightmare. He then notices me and starts walking over, and just as I'm wondering what his next move will be, he greets me enthusiastically like an old friend, catching me off guard and leaving me wondering if he remembers how he treated me in the past. Soon, we're making plans to hang out and have fun, and I'm reminded of my grandfather's words that people do change, though I'm still skeptical, so I ask him. He then apologizes and risks his life to save a stray cat from an oncoming vehicle. All of this convinces me that he has indeed changed until I hear Azuma's voice calling my name, and just as I'm about to turn, I feel a sharp pain on my head. The last thing I see is Azuma falling alongside me before everything goes black. I woke up feeling a bit lethargic and wondering where I was until I realized I was tied to a chair and remembered Azuma's weight on me, trying to push me away before blacking out. Senkuji was laughing maniacally in front of me and I looked to my left to see Azuma, also tied to a chair, struggling to free herself and sobbing. I then looked around and noticed that we were in a basement and wondered why she wasn't on Senkuji's side while feeling sorry for her. Senkuji then began talking about how he regretted not killing me in the past and how he now has the power to do so. He then proceeded to show me pictures of how I killed the pervert who came onto Azuma and how he realized he had to subdue me by tying me up using an ancient method called Toranawa that is nearly impossible to escape from it. 
also proceeded to warn me not to move around too much to prevent the bomb from activating. Azuma was sobbing the entire time when he pulled out a nail gun and shot it at her. She screamed and trashed around, trying to get out, making her appear pitiful. I then tried to comfort her, but Senkuji killed the cat as well, despite Azuma's efforts to stop him. I then realized I was next. He was relentless with me, which agitated Azuma, who began pleading on my behalf. I wondered how she had so much energy when I wasn't even in pain. When he saw that I was not reacting to the numerous holes in my body, he strangled me. Azuma launched herself to stop him, and I was finally able to escape the bindings, which stunned him. I then took advantage of the situation to demonstrate how to properly strangle a human being, at which point he passed out, causing Azuma to finally calm down. He awoke minutes later, naked and hanging from a beam-like structure with chains on his hands and his feet far away from the ground. His surprise and confusion on how the tables had turned were my pleasure as I explained to him how the years of torture they subjected me to were no match for the mere discomfort of the nails he drilled in me and the past four years I had spent preparing for this moment because this was only the beginning of their end. He finally awoke and began to take in his surroundings, perplexed as to why there was a table, mirror, fruit peeler, and tarp covering the floor. I cheerfully explained that it was easier to clean up the mess with the tarp and then brought out the same model of nail gun they had used on me in the past, reminding him of the pain he had caused me. I aimed at his eye and then moved to his abdomen, wondering out loud where it would hurt the most, and as expected, he began apologizing pathetically, and begging for mercy, crying out loud how it was all Kaiou idea sans and how he didn't have a choice because they wanted to see how far they could push him to suicide. At the time, the anesthesia had begun to wear off, and as expected, he began to feel hot. I then brought out the mirror and told him about a torture method that my grandfather had taught me to get the truth out of a person in which you peeled off their skin, and they became sensitive to even the slightest touch so that when the pain became unbearable, they said what was truly on their mind. So, when he saw himself in the mirror, he started screaming, and oh, what immense joy I felt and I hadn't even touched him, so I pelted nail after nail on him until he gave in, and confessed that he hadn't regretted a single thing they had done to him in the past, and how they'd gladly do it again if ever presented the opportunity, and of course, he didn't survive the torture. I then went ahead to meet Azuma-san, who was still bound by the ropes, and she seemed oddly relieved that I was still alive and well while she was the one who was still bound, all the while promising her death if she was ever to speak of what had happened on this day. When Grandpa arrived, I was so relieved that I had finally begun avenging my family that I passed out and left the cleanup to Grandpa. I did miss a few days of school, though, and visited my brother, hoping that one day he'd wake up and not abandon me in this cruel world like our parents did. Meanwhile, at the police station, patrol officer Uda Asako 